December 2017, um, we did mainly production then, and then December 2018 is when we opened up for the public, and we brought out our three liqueurs and our three main beginning spirits. So our first products were our apple pie, midnight mocha, and alpine cream, as well as our vodka, our corn shine, and our gin. Our vodka comes from, the wheat comes from a, our owner's nephew's farm, which is grown by some cherry trees, so it'll have a after hint of some cherry. Um, our cocktail gin, which is our Misty Mountain Gin, it's um, very botanical and very good. And then our corn shine, which is an unoaked, unaged corn whiskey. It's not a corn shine. Um, it's an amazing mishap that happened and everybody is starting to really love it as well as our alpine cream which is one of our best sellers and then the apple pie is one of the owner's friends who is also helps with some of the distilling here it was his very first recipe and it tastes just like your grandma's homemade apple pie and then the midnight mocha is Kind of like the Kahlua's, but instead of focusing in on the coffee flavor, we've done more of a chocolatey flavor. But with the cans, those are our hard seltzers. They're zero sugar, zero carbs, very low in calories. Um, they're going to be kind of like your neutrals, but we use all natural flavoring, so it tastes amazing and anyone can really drink it. I'm finally getting into the zero carbs and all that stuff. I could not do carbonated water before, but now I drink them like they're water. <laughs> um, and then here at the lounge, we actually have a long list of co cocktails and martinis. Uh, we're ever expanding on our menu. Purple Rain. Um, it's a gin-based cocktail. You would Definitely have to try one. They're amazing. And then our Caesars are to die for as well. Um, Crystal, the owner, has actually won awards for her cocktails. And her Caesars are number one. We make them with gin, corn shine, and vodka. Wonderful. Now, we saw that you've won some international awards as well. Yes, yeah, so we won the bronze in San Francisco, I think it was. Um, it was a little bit before my time, but it's, we just ended up randomly putting our stuff in and for the first time it took bronze. We were so excited. So all of our grains we get from local suppliers, like the owner's nephew's farm, we get our wheat from, uh, corn we get from a local farmer as well. We're actually looking at sourcing outside of our little area and going towards southern Alberta corn. Okay. Um, we get potatoes and all that from local farmers. We also do our ingredients for our apple pie from local from BC. And all of our garnish, the special garnishes, we tend, we try and go local. So, we have a rhubarb mulpito where we get rhubarb from some of the farmers around town and we actually grow a lot of the herbs and spices right here on the property. That's wonderful. Um, and then your botanicals for your gin, where do you get those from? So we grow our lavender and our mint and our juniper. We grow it all right here. 
So here in the near future, we're actually looking at partnering up with one of the local food trucks from in Alberta to come on out to the distillery for an evening or afternoon so that we can promote their business and they can promote our business and people can come and have a great time. We are open Thursday through Sunday. Uh, we ask that you book ahead if you would like a tour, but you can come check our website, email us, call us, just let us know when you're coming if you would like, or just come for some cocktails and some great fun. Tours are free, tastings, are, like samples are free, and then we hope that you enjoy your time and buy lots of products. <laughs> I'm actually apprenticing as a distiller here. I first started as a bartender and Brian, the owner, he just kind of started seeing my work ethic and he kind of wanted to get out of this room. So he kind of went further on. He asked if, I, if I'd be interested in making booze and I mean, who would it be? Um, and yeah, so I slowly started over with the mash done, just started making the simple mashes and then now I actually make the full line of spirits and liqueurs as well. And I actually just came out with my first product, which is the Glacial Tea. So this is our Wounded Warriors Vodka. It is a higher proof of our premium line. However, with the 50% alcohol, we have done a Wounded Warriors vodka and every $2 from every bottle goes to the Wounded Warriors Canada. We're in Hinton, Alberta, and we are heading into the old grind to have some locally roasted coffee, which we are in desperate need of, so come join us. Um, so we're at the old grind here, so can you tell me a little bit about this coffee shop? Well, the coffee shop was started, oh, I don't even know what year it was, but it started out in the mall, and then the person took over from the mall, bought this building, and uh, ran it here, and she had a store upstairs, and now the store is finished. There's office space upstairs, and my wife and I bought the place, or bought the business five years ago, and we've been going at it ever since. Wonderful. And you serve um, locally roasted coffee, so tell me a bit where your coffee's from. Coffee's from Jasper, and they started out in their garage as a hobby, and now they're full-blown doing it hard. <laughs> Wonderful. And you have a fabulous little cafe here, so tell me about your food. Our food is all homemade. Uh, we have many gluten-free options. Um, it's slow right now due to COVID, of course. <laughs> Uh, besides our food, we have all our art is all local, everything's all locally made, and even this young girl here is, that's her pottery right here. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Wonderful. But yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a go, and uh, we're hoping to be open very soon, Thursday. Wonderful.
from Alberta. But have you really seen Alberta? With its vast vistas and stunning locale, there is bound to be something for everyone. Visit RumbleAlberta.com now to plan your unique experience today. I believe um, and then about 16 or 17 years ago they sold it to Jack and Trish Wiersma um, so it's, it's been here for a really really long time uh, and then Eric Bergen and I bought it in March so this has been an active bakery yes. in Great Valley since 1955 wonderful yeah. so it's a business staple here and it's, it's pretty big too yeah. so tell me what have you got back there uh, so we have our ovens our mixers uh, lots of coolers and freezers tables, slicers, lots of things. Um, we are actually moving too. We're moving just down the street to the old Sears building. Okay. So that's gonna be happening. We were hoping now, but it's a little bit longer. It takes time. And you've got a wide selection of your bakery. Yes. Tell me, what do you make here? Uh, make a variety of items. We have about a hundred items on our menu total. Uh, so different things, breads, buns, uh, sweets, obviously, donuts, cookies, pies. <laughs> we also make cakes and sandwiches and soup and yeah certain like if somebody brings in something that they want us to make we can do that too uh, gluten-free not so much though because gluten-free you have to have a total separate area total separate oven yeah, yeah. wonderful so tell me um, what do people know you for here donuts and yes <laughs> and your famous donut which yes. one is it uh, no, it's all of them. So like our probably our glazed is the most um, But the donuts we've had the same donut maker since 1986 Oh wow! Yes. That's awesome. So 35 years she has been making donuts here. <laughs> yeah That is wonderful. Yeah. And what, uh, what kind of cakes and stuff? Do you do custom cakes? Yeah, we do do custom cakes. So I have um, my head baker here. She does decorating. She does some beautiful things. Wedding cakes as well. Um, we've done a few of those. And of course, cinnamon buns. Yeah, cinnamon buns, yeah, cookies. So we have changed a few items, not a lot of our recipes, but there's been a few things, our cookies, our pies. We've changed the recipes a little bit um, just to make it more like natural, I guess. Yeah, not bringing it in, so. And uh, when you purchased the bakery, did you actually purchase the recipes back from 1935? Yes. So you got the yeah. So we got everything. Um, the building is not ours. We leased the building, but I mean, the bakery itself is, yeah, comes with all of the recipes. Wonderful. Um, can we have a bit of a tour? Uh, sure. All right, let's go. Like the back area. This is where we make our cakes, is right in here. We do all of our cake decorating in this area here. And then, Sandwiches here, like our sandwich section. We do a lot of our bread slicing here and here. This is our big oven. This is a rotary oven. So it actually spins and it's constantly being heated up. Our, uh, our new oven, we got a new oven for the new building. It's much bigger than this, so we'll be able to up production quite a bit. And then there's the rest. This is where all the magic happens. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Awesome. 
And just one last question for you. Okay. If somebody has never been here before, first time in Drayton Valley, first time at your shop, what would you say to them? I would suggest they try the donuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have people come from all over, like Edson, Hinton, um, people that grew up here that stop in Drayton will come out of their way to stop in Drayton to get donuts. Yeah, it's awesome. so pretty sweet. That's great. Yeah. Um, so at the end of the day, when we have product left over, we donate all of our product to Warming Hearts, which is a local um, Drayton. I don't even know what to call it. Warming Hearts. Yeah, Warming Hearts, like charity, yes. Um, so they feed a lot of the homeless and a lot of the um, low-income families in Drayton Valley. So your shop is pretty unique. Um, so tell me a little bit about it. So if you've never been here before, what can they expect to find in here? Uh, as soon as you walk in the door, you're faced with tons of different attitude. If you have an attitude, this is the place to be. We have everything. Uh, David Gonzalez art, which is a huge line out of California. We've got hot leathers. We've got ink attic, like a 13, like a brand. There's everything that you can find in here and all for a very affordable price. Wonderful. So you've got a cross section, some of clothes, um, different kinds of things. What else can you buy? Like what all can you buy here? We've got beard products, skincare products, license plates, sunglasses, cups, mugs, uh, body leather, jewelry, flags, yep. cards, wooden signs, masks, drawings, tin signs, everything. It's a small store, but we've packed a lot in. Yeah, it's a fun place where you can kind of discover stuff. Have you got a couple favorite things in stock right now? Probably our insulated mugs. Those are yeah. our best seller of the last couple months. And with those go also our uh, the liquor glasses and the wine glasses. And of course, they're all full of an attitude. Yes. All right, tell me about your insulated mugs. So these are... <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, they have attitude. This one that I've got here is a mostly peace, love, and happiness with a little bit of go... <laughs> they are fully insulated with a slider lid. And we have tested these things thoroughly. I can, I always have mine on the back of the bike. Um, I don't ride my own bike, I ride with my husband. I haven't burnt him yet, so that's always a good thing. These you can have, you can actually put them up straight upside down and nothing falls out of them. And then she's got. <laughs> this is probably one of my favorite ones. It says, don't make me use my voice. Just epic. I don't know. They're absolutely amazing. They stay hot literally forever. My boyfriend had tea in his and he had it at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. He made it at like 6 a.m. and he actually burnt his tongue on it, which I found rather humorous, but they last all day. <laughs> yeah, we take them camping, we take them riding, everything, so. Wonderful. You've got some uh, specialty products here as well. Maybe you can walk us through a few things. So this is our line out of Edmonton. It's Salty Dog Beard Products. All of his stuff is all natural. It is absolutely amazing. He also has a pet line, which we brought some in for their paws and their noses and stuff like that. My husband and my boys all have very sensitive skin. Uh, this is the only stuff that they don't break out with. It works out great. Um, all of our beard combs themselves, we make those, but I can't keep this stuff in stock. And we even have a tattoo bomb through him. We've used it on our tattoos. We've used it just on dry hands. It's amazing. I have a girlfriend who's a cook. She uses it when she gets burns. So their line is absolutely amazing. We'll never stop using him. He doesn't get a vote. He has to keep making this stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So if, um, obviously you probably have a lot of local support here from yeah. the town. Um, do you get a lot of people driving in as well? Oh yeah, we've got a lot of friends and family coming from all over. Uh, I've had people find me as far as Calgary. I've had a couple of people find me up in Peace River. Don't know how they found me, but it's cool they did. We try to do our best to bring tourism to Sylvan Lake. Obviously, these last two years has been extremely tough on local business. So we try and do our best to reach out to all the bikers to bring them to town so they can see what this town has to offer. It's more than just a lake. Are there any other products you want to draw some attention to, talk a little bit about, just so that people are seeing something different from here? Because I'll splice things in. Awesome. Um, the purses are a really big hit. So tell us about your purses. So we've got mostly David Gonzalez art, but we also have the leather in the back, a uh, bit of a taste of Western, which is basically us for a bit biker, a bit Western. All of it seems to be really, really big hit, especially around Christmas time for gift giving and stuff like that. 
Um, everybody loves the DGA line in whatever form it comes in, whether it's a purse yes. or a t-shirt. So we've tried to bring in as much of their stuff as humanly possible. And other than that, our greeting cards, those are out of, uh, I believe those come out of the States. Everybody gets a giggle. I have not seen one person yet walk in and not laugh at those cards. And they're actually really tough to keep in stock because they're rude and crude and are a lot of funny. I tell everyone to come in, take a look around because there are literally so many things in here. We can't show you just one. Yeah. We could be here all day showing you different products. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of attitude and everybody is always more than welcome to come in. You may be from Alberta, but have you really seen Alberta? With its vast vistas and stunning locale, there is bound to be something for everyone. Visit RumbleAlberta.com now to plan your unique experience today. Alright, uh, can you tell me where we are? Uh, we're at the, the woodshed in the Sylvan Lake. Um, it's a sports facility for axe throwing. All right, so yeah. tell me about axe throwing. Uh, it's, it's a sport that's been around for quite a few years. Um, the, it's a Canadian sport. Really? Yeah, so wh wherever you travel, uh, like in the US and whatnot, they, they're like, oh yeah, it's a Canadian sport kind of thing. Um, and we have our own, with our own uh, league players and stuff like that. Uh, the, we're known for the Canadian flick, where you're, you flick your wrist kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so they, they don't like that. <laughs> all right, uh, so tell me, like, it's for all ages, though? It is, yeah. Uh, we have, uh, we start at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And so we have youth leagues uh, twice a week from 10 to 17 years old. And then we also have uh, Women's League on Tuesday nights, which is tonight, um, as well as a mixed uh, uh, adult league on Wednesdays. All right, and yeah. can people just drop in? How does, how does this work? Well, with, the, with COVID and everything, everything has to be done via uh, bookings. Uh, so people just phone in or you can book online and uh, get set up for, we're open six days a week, so okay. yeah. And minimum age to participate? Is 10. Is 10. Yeah. Maximum age? The oldest we've had so far, I believe, was 94. <laughs> and she, she rocked it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, let's take a little bit of a look at some max playing. Um, explain to me your board here. We've got points. How does this all work? OK, well, let's start with uh, the way the targets are made. Uh, these ones here are a uh, end grain target. And uh, so, and everything we do is local. So this is from a local uh, sawmill. Okay. And that, so it's an eight by eight post that we cut down to length and put it into a, a square box. Um, and then we wet them down, keep them nice and pliable and that. Okay. And it's a lot easier for, for people to learn on. And as well, we have the projector uh, style uh, to uh, where we have different games and whatnot. And it just makes it easier for, for everybody. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk just a little bit about scoring because you've got like bowling type scorecard up top? Okay. 
So this I can show, I'll show you after. Um, so everything is controlled with uh, the mouse. So wherever your axe lands on your target, you would click on it. Okay. okay. And it brings up your point to the top score sheet there. It, and then your target will change as well. As you click and run through the, the, uh, the throws and that, your bullseye will shift around as well. Oh, okay. On, uh, you'll see. Um, and yeah, for scoring, yeah, bullseye, we want to be in the red and we get a nice six and then four, three, two, one. As well, as we get further into the game, we have kill shots, which you'll see it's traditional in axe throwing, the big uh, blue, red, uh, blue dots. And uh, those are worth a lot more points, but they only show up on uh, throw five and throw 10 in axe throwing. And uh, they're worth more points, yeah. In, is the scoring system kind of standard across, or is this just what you guys run here? Uh, typically, it is standard throughout. Uh, there's two different leagues in that throughout uh there's uh the waddle league and the i don't remember the last the other one <laughs> but uh yeah it's standardized cool so yeah do you want to sh show us how you would kind of coach a first timer to yeah. throw an axe yeah for sure so typically when a person comes in uh we put them at ease get them ready we go, just go through the rules of uh, engagement kind of thing uh as for safety uh, just letting people know that the biggest thing not to walk behind somebody swinging an axe for obvious reasons and uh, then we just go through the technique we'll show the people the two-handed coach them through it get them familiar with it and then we go into the one-handed throw and then once everyone had a chance to at least get one or two in then we get them uh, into the game yeah all right can you demonstrate proper technique okay so basically for what we, we teach is uh, you want to grab the, your axe with your dominant hand near the base, thumb to the back, and then overlap with your second hand, okay? Thumbs side by side, okay? Uh, next, you want to put your opposite foot ahead, forward. Bring your axe 90 degrees over your head, so you're shifting your weight to the rear leg. And as you shift forward, you're doing an arc motion, okay? Your release point, is wherever you want to aim on the, the target, okay? So you want to come back and then... That's terrible. <laughs> oh, good. We can do it again. We can do it as many times as you want. <laughs> and yeah, there's two-handed and one-handed in each. There's not one that's better than the other. Um, typically, like in league, you'll have both, both camps kind of thing. I'm better at one hand, as you can see. Well, then do one hand. <laughs> so, do one hand, same thing. Yes. So also you see most places will have either uh, a line designation or in this, in our case, uh, a box. Right. So that is where you have to have your foot in in order to for it to be legal kind of thing as for your throwing. Both feet or just yeah. one has to be in? What's that, sorry? Both feet have to no, be in? No, just, just, just one. As long as one is in, uh, it's into the back. You can't step ahead of the box okay. in, in competition. So as long as you're Yeah. Give it one more. Give it one more. Why not? <laughs> I did flinch. I shouldn't. I didn't need to flinch, but I sure did. <laughs> So tell us about some of the different types of groups you've had come through here. So as, as uh, it's a sport that's accessible to everyone from all ages, from 10 to 94 or 99. Um, we've had, I believe, like as I mentioned before, that a 99 uh, or a 94 year old uh, come and throw here with success. We've had people uh, in wheelchair uh, throw as well. We've had also visually impaired. And so it's, it's fun for everyone.